All right, so we can cool here with Rachel Gordon. How are you doing tonight? I'm doing okay. So let's start this off. I seen some posts you did on social media, and that's the reason I'm calling. Let's uh, let's get it all out. Okay, I'll get out as much as I can. Okay. What I've seen is that uh, you made a statement about Gene Simmons, and uh, you're finally ready to bring it out into the public, and you actually said that Gene, uh, well, actually, let's put it in your your words here. What, what, what happened? Uh, I was sexually assaulted by Gene twice, once at the Capitol building, once in me and, me and Ace's home in Rancho Santa Fe. Now, uh... Uh, for, very forcefully, you know, he he's a little rough. Now, you, you you posted that he made you sign an NDA about these instances, he, is that right? He did, he did indeed. And now you're finally willing to speak out and say what happened? That was the only way that I could get any money to eat. I had no money to eat food or live or anything. And I won't get into all that right now, but, uh, you know, when... He offered to give me a little bit, you know. Uh, I had to. I had to agree to sign this thing. I didn't really know what it was, but yeah, it it, it said, you know, that I had to. That he denies everything, and that um, I'm never allowed to say anything about him, and Paul Stanley. So there you have that. Now, let, I had to sign it. It was like eat or sign. So they can come after me for extortion all day long. It was like I I eat and starve to death and not have a place to live or sign it. So, you know, I, I think it's manipulative and what he did was rape and I'm not afraid to just tell the whole world about it. Now, let's talk about the first time you said that happened at the Capitol building. Yes, it did. What went, what went on? Well, <clears throat> he invited Ace to go and do the vault experience that he was doing and and I went of course because I went everywhere with Ace and we went and uh, you know we were there for a while talking and everything in one room and then it and then it was time for them to get on stage and do their thing and talk and play and talk and play and we all kind of went in there and were escorted in there through the crowd of industry people. It was very crowded. It was totally standing room only. Ace was in front of me. I was in the middle, and Gene was behind me. Ace's back was to me. Uh, they were, you know, talking to people as we walked to the left toward the stage. Okay? All right. And um, I just suddenly felt, you know, Gene just grabbed all of my hair, all of my hair, I had really had, you know, a head full of extensions. I felt it yank back. He pulled it back, and I had to, I, I had to walk backward on my, in my high heels. <clears throat> he pulled me like a child would, you know, like a little boy in sixth grade. Pulled my hair, uh, had his arm up, kind of pulled it rough, pulled me on back so that my, the back of my body was pressed up against his front. And then he whispered in my ear and asked me, when when are we going to get the hell out of here? And I was like, where are we going? And he said, hell, but I'm probably going to have a lot of friends. And with that, he let go of my hair with like a jolt, where I kind of jolted forward a little bit, fixed my hair, and just went on with it. After they did their thing and they got off stage, I came up to Ace and I said, you know, look, I need to talk to you. It was very hard because there was a lot of people around. Right. You know, it wasn't one of those situations where we were roped off. We were in the middle of people and people were talking to us. So, um, I went to just say, you know, honey, I need to tell you something because, and I said, Gene, you know, t Gene put his hands on me. And with that, he said, I want you to, I want, you know, he, he he got me kind of alone and for a second as much as he could and went, I want you to be quiet about Gene. He he seemed like he was angry about it, but he was like, I want you to be quiet because he's he can get in trouble. He can go to prison. He's got all he's not allowed to touch any woman right now. And I said, Well he just touched me and he said, Well just you just fucking shut up about it. Shut up about it till we get to the hotel because I can't I can't deal with it right now. So in other words, he he couldn't deal with it. Okay. All right, he couldn't deal with it? Well, I really couldn't deal with it. And I said, no. <clears throat> I said, where is he? You know? Right. And I, I was told, no, don't look for him. 
I said, fuck that. I mean, of course I'm going to look for him. And I just pulled my hair and propositioned me. I'm going to, I found him hiding behind a door. Uh, oh. He looked like an insane person. He was standing behind a door with his, with his hands clutched into fists, looking at me like he was looking at a ghost. And I just said, what are you doing hiding, Gene? Don't you want to put your hands on me? That's you. Do you want to put your hands on me? Isn't that what you want? You know? And he just stared at me, freaked out. Well, okay. So be it, you know. Uh, it's, that's what happened. You know, next question. I don't want to get too more into that. It's, it's very upsetting to me, so. When, when you went back to the hotel and you, and you talked to Ace about it, what, uh, what did Ace I was told, well, he was... He was pissed off, and he was upset, but yet again, I was quieted because there was this reunion that they were dangling and that they had been talking about, and, you know, Ace, as, as upset as he acted like he was, uh, after I've after all this, I'm not really, I don't know if he, you know, how upset he really was. I don't know. I mean, I know that his pride was upset. Uh, and I know that Ace, you know, loved me. And so, but it's kind of hard to tell. I don't, I don't, the way he acted was strange, even though he was angry. He also, on the other hand, I was told to shut up for so long about it. And, and I was silenced for so long about it. I can't tell you how poisoning it is and how awful it is. It's like, you know, I mean, you know, Ace acted angry and acted out, and then on the other hand, you know, he'd go back and forth and tell me to be quiet about it because if I, I don't want to, in case I fuck up a reunion, God forbid. Well, you know, his shouldn't I be the first most important thing? Shouldn't his woman being touched be the most important thing? Well, it's not. It wasn't. It's not. Now, what what happened on the second occasion with Gene? On the second occasion, uh, it was the same year. So I guess today, I mean, I guess that Gene just couldn't get enough because he came out to visit the house and Ace told me that he and Gene were going into Ace's studio where they were going to write songs and they were going to jam all day and they both had ideas and this and this and this and this and this and it was hot. I was laying out on the other side of the house by the pool and, um, oh God, anyway, well, Okay, so Gene wanted to walk around and look at the house. You know, he, he was like, mind if I walk around? I have a lot of antiques and stuff. And he was, you know, just picking things up, walking around, looking at the house. They played. They ate some food. They went back in. I I brought coffee out. You know, Ace barked at me to get out of the room. And then, you know, et cetera, et cetera. I'll just get to the point. We had a, It was an indoor-outdoor home, much like all the homes in uh, Rancho Santa Fe and Southern California, so it was very hot. Um, they had eaten outside, and then Ace was out wandering around the yard, and, you know, hey, you know, hey, Gene, look at this tree. Look at this. Uh, we got an avocado tree. Look, You know, just yelling in, in hopes that Ace, I mean, that Gene would pay attention, you know. He started watering a tree, and then... Gene said that he's never seen Ace water anything before, and that was something that he couldn't believe. He's never seen it, you know, et cetera, et cetera. I was wearing a little sundress over a bikini, you know, standing to Gene's left, and it just happened really quick. It just it just happened just like anything like that ever happens. It happens in the blink of an eye, and it, he did it like he does it every day. He 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 performed... Like a pro predator, you know, like a guy that just does that every day, all day. He he reached his left arm around my side, the left side of me. I was standing to his left. His, his arm was like steel. His arm was like something that just couldn't be moved, like this mechanical steel arm that came around. Uh, the man is 6'3", I'm 5'5", five five, and I was barefoot in a sundress. Uh, and he just reached right under my my dress and put his hand right down the front of my bikini bottoms with his middle finger bent in, and he just whispered in my ear, pressed his, just like he did uh, whispering in my ear at the at the Capitol building, and he said, he said, come on, you know who I am. And I tried to wriggle away for a second and realized this guy's not going to move his arm. He's here in my house. My husband is across the, the yard. This guy, you know, my heart was just going, do, 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 you know, I was, 
freaked. I was like, you know, I was, um, this was a rape situation, you know. I can't tell you how I felt because it was terrifying. And I, at that, I just, with all my force, wriggled away and ran and went in the house and did run down the hallway, went in the room, slammed the door. You know, I was sick. I was crying, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I tried to talk to Ace about that a lot of times. And Ace, you know, he wanted to know about it. <clears throat> he asked me about it. He was angry about it. But yet again, you know, we got stuff to do with Gene. So I don't want you fucking it up. It was that. So I want to talk about today. I want to talk tonight. I want to talk a lot about the fact that when that happens to you, you're in so much shock. It, it, it being silenced when something like that happens, I can't tell you how poisonous that is, how poisoning it is. It, it feels it feels like someone not only, you know, you've been raped, you've been violated physically, you know, roughly. But then on top of it, you're not allowed to cry. You are, like someone's got this... Like you're underneath a hand of steel. Like I went from one hand of steel to to Ace's hand of steel, you know? Like just shut up. And Ace said to me also, he said something that I really would like to say. And it's very, it's very, it's very difficult for me to say. But he said, and this is a quote unquote, he said, come on, he said, you know, we were in bed one night, and I said, listen, just let me talk about it. Let me say it. Let me tell you. And he said, look, Poodle, he said, haven't you been raped a dozen fucking times? Haven't you been? Well, then you can fucking handle this. So shut the fuck up. That's what he said. That, that's terrible. And, um, now, so... Let's go forward to when we moved into the other mansion, which was very close by there. And that was in, you know, that was not, uh, it was not much after that happened. Um, and this is when Ace went public with the, with the, my gloves are off thing. He hadn't been, he hadn't been thinking about it at all. He just read something. That Gene said some some shitty remarks, you know, the usual bullshit that Gene had said about him in the press. And he flung up off the bed and started throwing things in our master bedroom and saying, motherfucker. And then I said, what is going on? And then he brought me in the bathroom and he, he, he cries all the time. I cry once in a while because I hold it in because I have been trained like a seal by that guy. But anyway, uh... He, 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 he sat on the side of the tub in our master bathroom and grabbed me and he said, now tell me what happened with you and Gene. I said, oh, I told him and it was like he almost wanted to know to fuel his temper. He said, fuck this, fuck him. He groped you, you're my wife and went forward with it and everything. But I feel, I feel like the only reason why he got upset about that is because eventually it affected him and his name was brought into it because he didn't show, a t you know, the kind of emotion that a man should show when somebody touches your, you know, your wife, who you call your wife, you know, and Jean has done this twice. And I just, I don't even have, I mean, I, I, the, the, the abuse that I've been through, through from, from, from Ace and from him, I, I don't know. I, I can't, there's like, how much can one woman take, you know? These guys don't give a shit, and they're going to try and get me down, but you know what? I mean, I might be crying right now, but I'm telling you. I have to just let it out, but you know what? I am not going to give up. They can come after me. They can do anything that they want. And I hope Gene hears every single bit of this because Gene, you are, you are, 
a really, really bad man. And I will tell you another thing. I, I know, I know everything. I know all their, all their purity cover-ups, all the bullshit. I know everything. And I never signed an NDA with Ace. And more is to come. I can't say everything right now. Okay. I'm telling you because this, what I know, and what, what I know, what I carry around knowing is going to be something that will destroy what is this, you know, this, this, this false kingdom called Kiss, you know. And I'm not talking about other rock bands. I'm talking about anything because nobody is like them. Nobody. There is no ego like that. There is no narcissism. You don't even know narcissism until you know Kiss. You just don't. You just don't. And I'm, this isn't about Tommy, and it's certainly not about Eric Singer. They're both gentlemen. Okay? But you know who I'm talking about. And those out there that have had things happen to them know what I'm talking about. So you're saying you believe there's other instances with, uh, with Gene Absolutely, or other without members? without a doubt. Without a doubt. Since the beginning of them. What I know is so detrimental is so unspeakable, it's so sickening, the things that I know, that I cannot, at this time, disclose them. But you can be damn sure that I will. Now, aren't you afraid that uh, after, after this... That they're going to kill me? <laughs> My life has been threatened so many times. It's not 1975. We got phones. We got cameras. I got security. They think they're going to come kill me, and then no one's going to know that it was them. Hey, guys, you know what? Have at it. That's what I have to say. Come I, kill I, me. Come, come take my shoe collection. What do, what do they want from me? I wasn't tell, gonna, them, tell them to come do it. I wasn't going to say kill you, but I was going to say, don't you think that they might put like a like a gag on you so you can't speak for it or whatever you know? A gag? Like what? Like, uh, you know, like... Uh, a gag. No, not literally, but by saying like... A stranglehold, like a... Like, legally. Look, legally. They can do whatever they want to do. But I'm telling you that there are women out there like me, and I have talked to them. There are women out there that they have silenced and that they have humiliated and that they have raped, they have assaulted, and they have bribed and quieted. I am not the only woman since 1972 that this has happened to. No, you keep on saying. No, I can't. I can't keep going with fear. I wasn't raised with fear. I can't keep going and be strong and be afraid at the same goddamn time. I just can't do it. You know, I have to. I have to know that I'm right, and I have to hold on to myself. Now you keep on saying they. Do you mean Gene and Ace, or do you mean who do you mean? I don't want to. I just. I'm going to say they, and I'm going to hope that everybody figures it out. Okay. Well, I mean, you no. you limit it to other members of the band. I'm really so. doing. I'm really doing the best I can do with this interview. I understand. I understand. I'm doing the best I can do with the interview. Now, uh, earlier we, we we were talking, and you said you were upset that Ace never stuck up for you. Do you feel that Ace was willing to let this go on to further his career? I can't get too into Ace right now. Uh, for reasons. I just can't. I just, uh, I can tell you what I told you, and, and, and I can tell you that, uh, that I, that I know some serious things that I will be letting you know later. Okay. Like, you know, and, and, and everyone's going to have to be satisfied with that because it's, um, you know, I know, what do I know? What does the girl that spent uh, 12 years with Ace really know? What does she know? Try everything, you know? <laughs> Try every damn thing. Because I never left his side, you know? I never walked away. I never left his side. I wasn't allowed to. So, um, I didn't. I mean, Jesus, if I went to get my nails done, he said, hurry up. You've been too long. I, I never left his side for this long, since I met him. So, that's that's where it stands, and uh, I'm going to talk soon enough. This is all I can say for now. Now, you said that both instances happened the same year. What year was it? 2018. So, this was just recent? Yeah. And all of the times that you've known Gene, there's never been an issue before? This just started with him a few years ago? Well... I'll tell you, when I first, um, I'm sorry, just a minute. 
Um, when I first met Ace, and um, well, when I met him in or the beginning of 2008, but when I when I first moved in with him in the beginning of 2009, he said some pretty weird things, you know that uh, that they were jealous. Uh, you know, I yeah, I'll say some more things about about Gene. Um, Gene's been a predator to me from the from when I moved in with Ace. And I'll tell you, um, in 2009, uh, I, I was driving around. I used to drive around Beverly Hills and go to the tanning salon and do things, okay? Once in a while, I was allowed to go to the tanning salon, okay? <laughs> my, my big getaway. Um, and three times, I saw a car in back of me with Jean's head. It, it was a... A bl- it was like a, it was a Rolls Royce, a black one. And I, twice, I know my way around L.A., so twice, I passed up my tanning salon and drove, and, and halt, and drove all around to try to get away from it. But one time, I pulled up to my tanning salon, and there they were, right in back of me. And somebody else was driving the car. She was in the passenger side. And, I just said, you know, fuck it. I'm sorry, pardon my language, but what am I going to do? You know, I was just like, what's going on with these people? I get out, and I just walk into the tanning salon. The girl working in there was like, oh, my God, what is that like Gene Simmons outside? I said, yeah, it is. And, and she knew me because I came in there all the time. She said, you want me to lock the door and shut? I said, yeah, you know, I would like you to shut the door while I'm getting a tan, if you know. She shut it, and then that was. That was that, and I told Ace, and he said, yeah, well, you know, you know, because uh, Gene wants to fuck you, you know, him and Paul are probably really, you know, you, he said, they never knew anyone like you, you know, they, and I was like, what? I said, what are you talking about? He said, well, you demand respect. All they ever knew was stupid broads, you know? They don't know, they don't know any, they don't know any smart broads. I said, well, I'm not a broad. And he said, you're a fucking broad. He goes, also, you're a, bro- you're a Jew broad. They like that. Jealous of that. So I got you. I got this smart chick. He said, you know, pulls, pulls a fag, but, uh, you know, they're jealous of you. I got somebody smart in my life now. So you can bet you wants to fuck you. And I was like, that's nice. Gross. You know? What can I say to that? Yuck. Uh, he didn't seem to give a sh- he didn't care about the fact that I was being followed. He didn't, he said, yeah, that's Gene. He don't drive. I said, oh, what does he want? Why is he doing that to me? And he, Ace just had a simple answer, you know. He's just, he's spying on you. He wants to know. He just, I don't know. You know, it was, it was, so it started in the very, in the very beginning, if that's your question. So there was multiple times then besides those two instances. Well, it's just three so far that yeah. we discussed. Yeah, the car thing, the following me, when we, when Ace and I had, when Ace got the place with me in L.A., that was pretty, pretty weird. I think it was weird. I mean, you know, any other woman would be freaking out, you know? Now, so, I mean, I had just moved in, you know? I was just like, Jesus, really? <laughs> Did you say Ace said Paul's a fag? Uh, yeah, I did say that. And I'll back it up again. Yeah, he did say that. That's what he always said. But I don't want to get... That's all I'm saying about Ace, really, honestly. Please have respect for the fact that I cannot go further than that with, with Ace right now. That, that That's fine. I, I would just yeah. caught me a little off guard with that. That's why I... Did it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people say it. Well, it's got nothing to do with what Gene did to me. You know what I mean? Now, now that you've come public with this, what do you plan on doing? Do you plan on filing charges against Gene? Um, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what's going on yet. I don't know. I can't. You know, I, it's very upsetting. You know, Ace was right when he when he was when he said, you know, hey, you know, is you've been raped a lot of times and stuff. Well, you know, a lot of things have, have happened to me. I grew up in Southern California. I grew up going to L.A. when I was young and this and that. There's a lot of things that happened to me, and you'll, people will know about them soon, you know. But I'm just telling you about this one thing, and I'm telling you that there's a lot more that I can't say now, but I will be saying. 
I mean, you know, for you. I can't live in fear. I can't sit around and be scared, you know. Yeah, I am a little bit, but I mean, I'm going to have to just put my ass on the line to uh, hopefully help all the women that this is happening to have a, enough strength to go forward because, because, you know, it's the right thing to do because I was raped. I was violated. You know, I'm not just going to suck it up anymore. And that's happened to me where I can't. It's poisonous to do that. It's bad. Now, after all this time, what made you decide to finally come forward? Well, I'm not in the... I'm not under... I don't live with the narcissistic controlling man anymore. That, you know, I mean... Uh, th there's nothing preventing me now. and There's nobody going, hey, get off the phone. Do this, do that. You know, I don't have that. You know? I'm telling it. So there you go. Now, you, you said... I'm being as brave as I can possibly be about it. Now, Gene made you sign an NDA. Does yeah. That, what year did he make you do that? Um... That was last year, 2019, because I didn't have a single dime. Well, now, this was, was this prior to your breakup with Ace, or was this post? It was when he walked out, and I had no money. I don't have anyone to ask. I don't have, everyone in my family is, is, is dead. I have a 95-year-old grand, grandfather. I have a father who is uh, still recovering from cancer and lives in the desert. My mother died the year I met Ace. My sister uh, died in 2018, the first time that he relapsed. So I don't even have, you know, he knows I don't have anyone. He knows I don't have anything. No. I mean, you know, I'm a singer, but he took that from me, too. Now, what he had you sign with it. I don't want to talk about Ace anymore. Damn it. I don't want to do that. So we're, okay? talking, we're talking about Gene right now. When, yeah, okay. When uh, Gene had you sign that, was he specific about the sexual assault, or was there more to it? Gene didn't show up. He wouldn't. I had to sit with his lawyers. But in, in the I, I called them, and I needed some money. I have no one else to call. There's a, few, there's a couple people I could have called, but they already gave up on Ace. So when you signed it, I mean, what was what was said that you couldn't say? Was it specific for the sexual assault, or was it for your whole time with Kiss and everything? I don't have the paperwork in front of me, but it was just that I couldn't say, and I'm not to go forward with anything, and that he denies everything, and that I cannot go forward with anything, with any information, anything that I know about Paul and Jean. I don't have it right in front of me, but that's that was the gist of it. Yeah. Right, right. So, um, you know, that's it. Full, fully knowing what I that <laughs> that I do know things. But no, you know, when 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 I get my life threatened, when somebody puts their hands on me sexually, and or in any way, in a gross way like that, uh, and, and I'm assaulted, and then my life's threatened, and my life's been threatened too many times for me to be quiet now. Okay, so when that happens to me. I don't care what some asshole made me sign. I'm going to go forward, okay? That's the deal. I don't mean to say it, it sounds so angry, but you, you've you heard how upset I am. And I'm telling you, when you are assaulted, when you are raped, when you are silenced, when your life is threatened, you go forward. It doesn't matter what somebody manipulated you into signing. You know what I mean? Right. It's like, right. oh, hey, starve and don't have a place to live or else you know, agree to this. Okay, well, you know, I, I, I'm i in survival mode, right? I have to, I don't know what to do. So, <laughs> I mean, I'm going to come out with it. I just can't write, write this minute. Now, was it, was it a one-time payment that it gave you, or was it... Uh... I really don't want to get into any more details. I've, I've, I've talked about as much as I can talk about, and I have respect for you and your show, and I want to do it again, and I will come out with more. But right now, that's all I can do personally like emotionally i'm pretty drained too i'm i've been going through a whole lot you know what i mean it's um it's it's hard 
I, I, I agree with you 100%. I mean, uh, for you to go through everything you went through that ordeal had to have been terrifying. I mean, two sexual... It things. is. I wake up six times a night. Like, you know, I have... Uh, now, would, yeah. you, would you say that the instance gave you PTSD? Yeah, I would say that. Yes, I would. Of course. I mean, for God's sakes, if I... It, yeah. I'm not afraid to say that. That doesn't that doesn't mean anything. I mean, it's a, it's a kind of a shock, you know. You you hear the yeah yeah. You hear a man's boots and you you jolt, you know. You you. My life was threatened many times. I mean, to my face. I mean, if that's not going to give you PTSD, I don't know what is. Well, I mean, anybody in your situation would definitely, I mean, think about it. I mean, you Absolutely, know. without a doubt. And I've talked to women that are coming forth already with, with, with their stories about what Jean did to them. And I don't even want to go there right now, but it is going to be, it's going to be said. I mean, it's got to be hard. I mean, you have the man. It's got to be heard. It could be happening right now to somebody and, um, and somebody who is not even strong enough to say anything, you know, at all. And I know what it's like to be silenced. I know what it's like to be with a guy for so many years. You keep thinking that you can help. You keep thinking that you're strong enough to endure it. But not all of us are, you know, I mean, you know, the strongest woman alive can't just hold stuff in. You still have to cry, you know. And I was put in a situation where we never even stopped traveling or anything. It was hard for me to even have a moment to cry, you know. Well, I, I'm glad that you're speaking out. I mean, hopefully it helps more people. I mean, you know, people are caught up. I really hope that it does. I really hope that it does. People are going to be caught up that it's like some fairy tale for you that you're involved with a, a rock star. A fairy tale? Jesus Christ. A fairy tale? I'm saying that you're involved with a rock star. You know, I mean, not everyone gets to Everybody live. thinks that. Everyone thinks that, yeah. Well, it's such a fairy tale that my GoFundMe was removed and my rabbi put it up and we have absolutely no idea how that was removed. A fairy I mean, tale? No, I'm not saying in a good way. I'm mm -hmm. saying that, no, I'm not in the least bit. I mean, think about it. Yeah. You, For you to be living your life. That's your, what people think. I your, understand. That's your, what people think. Your That's husband, what it looks like. Your husband's in the backyard. You have a man. That's what it feels like. It feels like that a lot, okay? A lot, I want to tell people, it feels like a fairy tale sometimes. And then sometimes it feels like a scary nightmare, you know. Well, that that definitely got to be like a nightmare. I mean, like I was saying, for for you to have it's your like a, it's like a fairy tale that's false. I don't know how to explain it except for that it's like a fairy tale, and you feel like you you're not completely in it. You're you're you got one foot in the fairy tale and one foot in hell, you know. And a lot of you know that it's how you feel a lot of the time. You know? I, I, I can't blame you for feeling that way. I mean, like I was saying, you, you got your husband in the backyard. You have a man that goes ahead and, and penetrates you when he's mere feet away from you, taking his finger and, and uh, penetrating you oh, right there. God. You can't yell. Please. You can't yeah, scream. I know. I know. No, no, no. I felt like I couldn't. You know, everybody's had those dreams where you're like, I think everyone's had those dreams when you're trying, you're, you're trying really, really hard to scream and nothing's coming out. That's what it felt like. And then to immediately run away and think that your husband's going to go ahead and stick up for you and have it all get turned on you to where you're the bad person in the situation. Yeah. Yep. That was, yeah. It was a really hard year. There's a lot. I wish I could say more right now, but I can't. I mean, and it's it's got to be hard on you, especially with, with a person like Gene, who's constantly in the news. I mean, anytime you, you turn around every few days, he's he's popping up for something. Gene thinks that he, Gene literally told me when we toured with Gene, Gene told me, and I was told by Ace, look, you're, you, you'd better kiss his ass, you better act like, you know, he's nothing less than Santa Claus, and shut up, because if you fuck this up for me, it's going to be, that's going to be it. Okay, so anyway, uh, Gene told me to my face, Gene said to me, he said, my God is money. That's what it is. I said, come on. I've never heard anyone say that. And you can't be serious. Who would say that? Right. You, 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 this, you got, I mean, I've heard about you saying that, but I don't really believe it. We were boarding a plane. We got on the plane. He was sitting in back of me. 
I was being pinched not to say anything to him, but I leaned over and I said, how could you say that? How could you say something like that? He said, I'll tell you another thing. He said, I would do anything for money. Anything. I said, what? He goes, I would do any fucking thing for money. Everyone who knows me knows that. And I just, I'm going to leave it at that. I'm going to leave it at that gross statement. Now, over the over the years, I mean, were you ever told to be extra friendly to Gene? Yes. And that's all I'm going to say. Yes. Were there good times with Gene at all, or was it all just him constantly coming at you? I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to talk about it anymore. I really don't. I, I, I want to, like, that's all the interview I want to do. Okay. Because I, I think everyone understands, you know. But I, I, there's more to come. I just can't get into it in one night. It's too much for me. I, I totally respect that. I mean, I totally have to go get in the bath. You know what I mean? I thank you for spending the time and discussing and finally getting this out in the air. And well, I respect you, Joe. You've done good interviews with me before. And I respect your show. I respect you because I think that you respect what I'm going through. And, and, um, and please respect the fact that I can't give you all the information I know now, but it is, it is going to come because I'm not going to harbor it anymore. I'm not going to harbor it anymore. Well, I mean, like I said, I, I totally respect you and I thank you so much for spending the time and talking to me about the horrible things that you went through. And whenever you're ready, we're here for you. We'd love to talk to you again. Well, thank you, and you will be talking to me. You'll be talking to me sooner than later. Now, in the meantime, if there's any other girls that want to reach out to you that had something similar happen to you with Jean, would you, would you like them to, to get a hold of you? I want, I sure I do, and I've been putting that out, and I have had women coming to me with, with, with unspeakable things. So, yeah, keep it coming, any women that want to talk to me, because if you're afraid to tell what happened to you, if you're afraid at all, I will be happy to even leave your name out of it, but I will be hap happy to tell your story, too. I will take it. You know? I'll, I'll just take it. I've come this far. I'm not going to... I'm not giving up. You know what I mean? No, I, no I'm, I'm not trying to press or anything, but since you came out, how many women have contacted you over an instance? I can't... I don't want to get into that. That's very... I don't... I can't get into that. Okay. Really, honestly, you know, I, I, I've got to give my brain a rest because it's very upsetting it does take me back to other things that happened uh i think that was worse because you know when you're younger uh in life you can run to your grandma and grandpa you can run home you can run to your best friends you can run to the beach but you know when you're in your own home and there is nowhere to run because you're in your own home and the man that you love that protects you you can't run to him you can run to your bedroom, but you can't really, I don't even, I can't even explain what that feels like. Do you understand me? I can't explain it. It, no. is, it is like somebody, it's like, it's like, it's almost like just someone raped you and person that you love helped and held you down. Emotionally, he did, unfortunately. Emotionally, that is what it feels like. And, I, and I, I'm sorry that you went through that. I mean, that's terrible. I mean, you, you'd expect someone that you love and been with that, for that time to stand up here for you regardless, regardless of a chance to go back on the road, regardless of anything. If he loves you, you should be his top priority. Should. And I'm, and I'm very sorry that, that you went through that. And I'm that's not, right. You know what? Fuck it. Because I am really, uh, you know, if I can get across to these other women that this is happening to, and believe me, I have been... When I was 14, I was stuck in a very big producer's house. You'll be hearing about that soon. But I'm just telling you that there are so many women that are coming to me and reaching out to me. Just keep it coming. Keep telling me. And if you're being told to shut up, tell me about it. Because I can maybe, hopefully, I can help. <clears throat> well, I mean, I'm very proud of you for going ahead and speaking out and, and getting your voice heard. And Thanks. You know, I mean, it's, it's a great step forward for you. I mean, hopefully this helps alleviate some of your emotional pain. I know it's going to take time for it to come out for you mentally, but at least you're able to get your voice out. You're, you're able to talk about what happened. It's a step forward in the right direction. Let me tell you something. Gene Simmons is sick. 
He is sick. He's sick, everybody. He is a sickening, sickening, sorry excuse for a human being. He can go see the Dalai Lama all he wants. He can do whatever the hell he wants, but my last words on this show are going to be, he is a really disgusting, despicable, foul thing walking the earth, and it needs to be, it needs to stop right now. Now, I, I'm, I'm assuming that Gene's going to be hearing this. What would you like to say I, to Gene? What would you like to have finally get I out and say to him? I a lot of things that I would not even say right now. I mean... Um, you know what? He knows who he is. He knows what I just said, and he hears it. You know what? It, it, don't don't call yourself any kind of religious man. Do not call yourself a human being, and don't call your don't even call yourself a man. Don't. How dare you? How dare you call yourself a man? How dare you, Gene Simmons, call yourself a man? How dare you? That's what I have to say. I mean, it's it's got to be hard. I mean, at least to finally get that out for all the time that's been through and having it all build up in your head. Like you said, you know, we spoke earlier today. You, you said you're, you're up late at nights because you, you're thinking about these instances. Everything gets to you. It's got to be a hard life. Yeah, it it's just not a fairy tale right now, kids. It's just not... It can't, you, you, you can go through little bits of fairy tale life and... And then you get a big slap of reality in the face all of a sudden. And that reality is more frightening than anybody can know when there's power involved. And, um, I don't know. You just look at yourself in the mirror and you just go, I was, I'm a good person and I know I am. Why does somebody want to do this to me, you think to yourself. But you know what? Listen, I have to, I got to, you know, listen, this is happening to a lot of women. And um, and it needs to stop right now. I'm just saying it. It needs to stop. It has to stop. When is it gonna? How far is it gonna go? Now, now when you say there's power involved, I mean, when you think about it, power, kiss, power, money, <laughs> power, people fans off, ever, I mean, people off, silencing people, threatening people, silencing them. Very serious. It's very very serious. I mean, I'm unfo I'm, you know, it's a, it's a crazy thing. I mean, if any country you go to, you can show Kiss and they would know who they are. Right. I mean, you, you just talk about power. I mean, and everyone, you know, regardless if you can... Listen, when you can't go to Disneyland and you can't go to any city in the entire world without without somebody, without, without bodyguards, and you, you're talking about power. And where there's power... Where there's power, a lot of bad things happen. Yeah, I mean, That's all I'm gonna say. fortunately, where there's power, there's corruption. Yeah. Yep. And there's lies, and there's bullshit, and there's cover-ups. Yep. That's okay. That's okay. Because Gene always brags about his memory. Guess what? My memory is just as good. Only I am not a predator. I'm not a monster. I'm just a woman who fell in love with Ace Frehley. Uh, they grew up at the beach. Now, now well, bringing up the, the, the first instance that happened during the, the vault thing, you said there was a lot of people around. you think there might have been some video footage that got caught? Po -po there was, and then it got taken down. I, you know, there was a video of, of him reaching over to my head, and then it, got, it all got taken down. It's a joke. It just got taken down. Who knows who put it up? Who knows what? You know, I don't know. Well, I don't care. I, I don't. I can't care right now about that. I'm just saying to to help with everything that goes through. I mean, hopefully, if someone is listening and they do have that video footage, hopefully they come forward and display it to you. Um. Yeah. Well, it should be there, but you know, the first thing I did was tell Ace. You know, um, somebody had to have taken it. Somebody. People were staring right at us. You know, but you know what? There's power. There's power. I'm telling you, they'll do everything. And you know what? These guys, these guys are gonna do every single thing. And I'm talking about Gene because he's the main one. He thinks that he's 
that he owns everybody, that he can, that he owns every single person and every single thing. And, um, he's going to try every single thing. They're going to try to hurt me. They're going to try to scare me. They're going to try more things. They're going to try whatever they could try. I'm sure. Um, but you know, okay, so what, what's the worst? I guess if they get me, they get me, right? If they, if they, if they harm me, if somebody really wants to harm you, they're going to. But not before I let other women know that they need to be super strong and come out about it. Well, you know, unfortunately, more women that come out about these these men in the industry doing this kind of thing, the more they're not going to get away with it, and the more they're they need to be. You know what? They need to be looked at. They need to be. Uh, it, 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 Kiss needs to be examined more. Now, I mean, you, you said, you, "How can they harm me?" Unfortunately, it sounds like they did. I mean, what more? What more can be done? You know what? Something like that. Yeah, it's a good way of putting it, right? I mean, isn't the worst? Hasn't the worst happened to me? I mean, yeah. <laughs> Now, every, everybody out there has their own vices, and, and Gene's very public about not drinking or doing drugs. Would you say his vices are sexual? Yes. Almost to a deviant level? Absolutely, without a doubt. There's something wrong with him. It isn't, it's, it's just not right. You don't, it's just, there's, yeah, of course I do, yeah. I mean, you you have to have some kind of something in your head that makes it think that it's okay for a man to do that when his friend his. It's called narcissism. It's near. I've been learning about it for like two years, a year and a half now. I've been reading about it and learning about it. It's called narcissism, and it's called a sociopath narcissist when they they don't have they do not have any empathy. They don't have that filter. Everything they do in their life is to benefit them and it's for them. Everyone around them, their money, their wife, their wife's clothes, the way their wife presents herself, uh, every single thing, every aspect of their life is something that serves their narcissism. It's something that, that, that tells, that makes them, you know, feel more powerful and better about themselves. What they don't like is to be completely alone. They they don't like that at all because then they have to look at themselves. Then they have to question themselves. They don't like that at all. You know. Yeah, I mean, it, it sounds like it was a uh, horrific experience, and it, it definitely did damage to you. And I'm, I'm sorry you went through that. I will live, and I will go on, and hopefully I'm going to be able to help other women that are going through it and have gone through it and haven't been able to say anything. Well, I mean, this is a right step in the, that direction. Finally getting your voice out, and I'm, I'm, I'm glad you could be heard. I'm glad. Hopefully this influences other women who went with such a terrible thing with Jean to go. I'm sure they're doing it right now. I'm sure they're going through it right now. I mean, how can they not? What, am I the only one? Of course, of course not. <laughs> of course not, you know? I mean, you know, like I said, hopefully you're able to band together, and I, I don't know what your, your next plan is going forward with Gene and what kind of retribution you have in mind, but... Uh... Yeah, I don't know. I don't know, but right now i got to go, and, um, and thank you so much for listening have me on the show. Well, I certainly appreciate your time. It was very awesome of you to go ahead and speak about these terrible things that went through you, and I'm glad you finally got it all out. I'm not near done. It's not all out yet, but I did get a lot out. Well, hopefully it helps. Um, yeah, my phone my phone's in the red right now, so I've got to I've got to really hang up here. But all right, Rachel, it was great speaking with you, and hopefully we get to talk again soon. We will talk again soon, and I hope that, that women out there reach out to me and keep on reaching out to me because, like I said, I'm getting feedback. Keep it up. And um, if you're scared to go forth, I will. Well, nobody should, be, nobody should be threatened. Nobody should be assaulted. This shouldn't happen to people. And, um, and it has to be stopped. There's too many out there, too many women that this is happening to. 
and too much power in the industry that is letting it happen and allowing it and uh it's just sickening it's sickening well i'm glad you were strong enough to finally find your voice and come forward with it well thank you so much and um i'm gonna go so thank you for letting me be on the show i it was a pleasure having you and i look forward to us speaking again okay um bye everybody and right. good night to you. All right, try and get some get some rest after that. It's going to be hard. Okay, thanks. Yep, take care.